just honk if you're hungry. At lunchtime, customers fall in line at Chick-fil-A in South Asheville. And whether they order at the drive-thru or wait for curbside pickup, they want their fast food fast. I mean really fast. He's crazy, isn't he? He can really run. <laughs> you have a nice day. Aaron Basham brings the food in a hop, skip, and a jump. We sit over here and eat and we watch him. He's just a lot of fun. The brand ambassador is frequently an out of breath, breath of fresh air. Once his so-called cone dragon is set up, the real fun begins. And you don't mess with the cone dragon. Yes, you can come right here. He directs traffic at Chick-fil-A's peak lunch period. Come on down. I don't bite, I promise. More than 200 cars an hour flood the drive through each day for lunch and a show. I love him. He's got a great attitude. He's a... Uh, He's happy and friendly. Well, someone wants to describe this profession like it's herding cats. And they're not exactly wrong. He is just precise. It's crisp, clear, and I've always wondered if he was ever a band director. Squeeze right in. And then you're going to get right here. He clearly moves to the beat of his own drum. Right this way. And just goes with the traffic flow. It kind of dwells deep within the soul and then goes down to the feet. And by before you know it, you're just kind of doing this. He is so entertaining to watch. Maybe scoop a little bit more for me, just a wee bit. The bold gestures help keep the long line moving. Stay on this side. Thank you. But they also satisfy a hunger to smile these days. We don't work in the food service, we work in the people business. And uh, I'd rather have happy people. He's in a good mood and made me smile. We need that. We sure do. <laughs> Chick-fil-A doesn't sell happy meals, but thanks to Aaron, this location provides some much needed nuggets of joy. You make it very enjoyable. I try. In South Asheville. And have a nice day. John Lee. Take care. News 13. Have a stupendous day. And it'll be totally loaded with books. Career and Technical Education Month, or CTE Month, at Rosman High School. They're excited to get their hands on tools and, you know, cut stuff, nail stuff, you know, whatever they can do besides book work. Kids are um, getting to see how we can take old and make it new. So as long as we're grinding out any spots you don't like. Teachers of good. the welding and carpentry classes are preparing these students to enter directly into America's workforce. A ton of problem solving, trying to figure out the safest, best way um, to make something happen. So yeah, the kids, it's just great for them. Getting experience for a career in a skilled trade. There's a good portion of our kids that come through our program are gonna get a job in a trade. Yeah, I'm gonna be on film throwing my back out. <laughs> but this CTE month is a little different. We're making the magic book bus. I'm all about using my resources. <laughs> I'll pull in whoever's willing to work. School librarian Sarah Justice says the county needs a book bus to serve the middle and high schoolers during the summer. We have a great CTE program. I'd like something a little more secure. That I knew I could do a partnership there. And she did. We're customizing shelves put on it for our books. Installing them is going to be it's going to be a challenge. What better project would give the CTE students real-world experience? The students are getting such hands-on experience. While also benefiting others in the community. Having the kids work on this, you know, gives them a lot of pride because they're going to see this riding down the road. In Transylvania County, Ken Corn for News 13. Kimberly King spent two months investigating the root causes of many of these shootings considered a crisis. Asheville is known for the Biltmore Estate and the great outdoors, but police sources tell me there is another Asheville in need of critical attention where squabbles on the street are leading to gun murders. There was nothing that he would hide from me. I mean, he always spoke to me about everything. Yeah. 
Miyoko Jackson can't hide her pride when she talks about her son, Kanaz. He went to Irwin High School. He was a good student. But as he got older, he started to hang with people she didn't like. After someone tried to stab him, Miyoko says Kanaz, who had no criminal record, decided he needed protection. You were okay with him buying a gun? Yes, when he turned 20. The minimum legal age to buy a handgun from a dealer is 21, 18 if bought from a private seller. I had the kind of recognition on myself, like, what did you just tell your son to do? Last August, Miyoko says her son came home worried about an ongoing beef. He says, Mom, he says there are several people, and he called their names off. They're trying to get me killed. Five hours later. A man who was shot in West Asheville last night has died. I just want to talk to him. I miss him. I miss his voice. Police say eyewitnesses saw Kanaz killed here on Buffalo Street, but so far they say those witnesses have refused to talk. And without their information, police say they do not have enough evidence to make an arrest. He's like, Mom, these people been looking for me. You know, it's like a retaliation thing. You know, they're on their phones and they're competing with one another, calling each other out, which leads up to a shooting. One city that reduced its gun violence is Buffalo, New York. APD Chief David Zack plans to replicate some of their model here. Buffalo Deputy Police Commissioner Joe Gramalia has focused on revenge murders. He says often stem from verbal taunts and disrespect. This is evidence-based. You go where the violence goes. We follow the shootings. One part of the program is called custom notification. It is where police and community members literally knock on doors of young men and their families to let them know that they are aware they are posting disturbing images online. They're posing with their guns as they're calling each other out and saying what they're going to do. Number one is to let them know that we're aware of what you're doing. Partnering with nonprofits is also key, knocking on doors, offering help. Buffalo also has a gang unit, a non-fatal shootings unit, a dedicated gun crime court, an analytics team looking for individual posts. The city reduced gun violence by 24% in 2019. Asheville Chief David Zack came from upstate New York. He says he knows the direct communication program works. Here's an opportunity. But if you don't take it, there's going to, you know, if you're fortunate enough to survive, there's going to be consequences. A team of Asheville police detectives already monitor individuals with a web of recurring connections to gun crime. The matrix identifies high risk individuals. We know the players. The community knows the players. Are those what police call trigger pullers? Are those individuals that are repeat um, felons? All of the above. Persons with, you know, long arrest histories, histories of gun crimes. We made some significant uh, arrest. The pandemic has prevented key parts of the program that include the face-to-face -face meetings. Law enforcement is there. The DA is there. The consequence has to be certain for carrying or using a gun in this city. Community leaders will also be there offering help, but there's another problem. Is the police department in crisis trying to fight crime in this city? We have significant challenges in front of us. Right now, I mean, we're struggling just getting to our 9-11 calls. 61 officers have left, the chief says, for a variety of reasons. Is it the call to defund the police? Has the morale suffered? The turnover of at the top? It's all of the above. Another issue, low salaries, 32,000 for a trainee cop. The cop shortage has kept the new unit from having a planned 15 officers. The unit has five. Meanwhile, discharge calls are rising. 48 calls to Pisgah View, 49 around the Shiloh community in South Asheville, 15 downtown, including one near the Grove Arcade, 42 in Monford, including Klondike. Vice Mayor Shanika Smith has been talking with Chief Zach about his plan. She's aware of the crisis. You know, now we have to stop the bleeding. We have to address things head on. Her only concern, can face-to-face -face reality checks work? There's so many families that have had negative interactions with law enforcement. That knock at the door could be uninviting. You need to have persons in your community who are willing to, again, interrupt some of this violence before it happens. The choice is either you turn it around, you go to jail, 
or you're going to die in the street. Last year, because of the pandemic, police in Buffalo could not do any of their custom notification programs. They saw their gun violence numbers skyrocket, but the deputy police commissioner there feels that that is evidence that the violence and gun interruption programs work. Reporting in Asheville, Kimberly King, News 13.